Welcome back geometry students. Uh, this is uh, the third video for uh, geometry section 1.2. We're talking about angles and uh, if you see what I have here I've got a protractor on the screen and it's actually measuring this angle. So just in case you need a refresher or you're not really sure how to use a protractor, notice here's my red angle and on your protractor you should have a little point down here where this line on the bottom and this line going up to 90 intersect. So what you want to do is you want to put your vertex of the angle right there at that point. Okay. Then you want to turn your protractor so that one of the rays is on zero, just like this one here. Okay. Then to read what the angle is, you look at the other ray, the other side of the angle, and see what number it goes through. So for this angle, it goes right through 50 degrees. So this angle is a 50 degree angle. So if I go ahead and move this, now I've got a 90 degree angle. Okay, and again, you're going to put the vertex right here at this point in the bottom on the middle of your protractor. And then you're going to have the side going through zero, one side going through zero. And then you just look along and see where your angle ends up. So if I wanted an obtuse angle, an angle bigger than 90 degrees, I could put it right over here. And we can, again, one ray goes right along to zero. And the other ray comes over here and ends up at 144. Here's our measurement right there for us. You'll have to figure out your own when you use your protractor. So 144 degrees. Now some of your protractors might have a scale that goes from 0 to 180 going this way. And then you'll have another scale on the inside of that one that starts at 0 over here and goes to 180 over there. So you just need to use a little bit of common sense when you're reading the angles and figure out which one of those scales you want to use based on whether your angle is obtuse, like mine, greater than 90 degrees, or if it's less than 90 degrees. Okay, so that's a little refresher on how to use your protractor. So let's hop back over to the notes. Here we are back over in the notes and we have three different angles here. So uh, to get you started I'm going to put a vertex right here on this angle and I want you to use, uh, pause the video and use your protractors and see what you can figure out uh, for the measurement of each of these angles. So pause the video now, use your protractor, and see what you can do. All right, so uh, here are the three measurements that I came up with. Hopefully you came up with uh, something very close or similar, maybe within a degree or two. This first angle is an interesting angle. It's 180 degrees. So we may think of this as a straight line, but we could also think of it as an angle. So this is actually called a straight angle All right, and it measures 180 degrees so if I wanted to name the angle I'd have to put a couple more points one on each side we could name them, label them XYZ and we could call this now angle XYZ remember the vertex is always the middle letter that we name All right, and then we had 20 degrees over here and 120 degrees over there. Again, if you have any questions about how to use your protractor, make sure that you ask. All right, let's move on to example three. One of the skills that you're going to need to have is to be able to take information that's given to you and label your picture with tick marks. And we've talked a little bit about this already, so let's go ahead and do this. So for part A, we've got segment BW is congruent to segment TI. So again, I could use any tick marks that I want. I'm going to put little circles this time. So there's BW, and way across here is TI. So now I can see just by looking at my picture, oh, these have the same tick mark. Those two segments are congruent. And then I have uh, WO congruent to IO. So let's use another tick mark. So here's WO, and here's IO. Use whatever tick marks you feel like. Now we have a couple of pair of angles. So angle W, B, T. Remember, B, that's going to be the vertex. That's going to be in the middle. So W, B, T. You see how I trace that out with my pen here? W, B, T. Here's my vertex at B. 
So I've got this angle. And then I have ITB. So T has to be in the middle. That's my vertex. So here's ITB. T is my vertex. So I'm going to put the same tick mark that I put over here at B. And then the last one I have, I have angle BWO. B, W, O, I trace out that angle. This is my vertex up here. It's the letter in the middle. And T, I, O, T, I, O, that's my angle down here. So we had all this information. We laid, There are four congruency statements. So now I have four sets of tick marks so I can look right at my picture and see Oh, all of these pieces of information are congruent. Again, something that's really important for you to be able to do. Um, if you have any questions, again, make sure that you ask. You have to ask. All right, example number four. We're going to name each angle bisector and the angle it bisects. Then name any congruent angles. So let's do the first one together, and then I'll let you guys do uh, the other two. You can pause the video, and when you restart it, you'll have some answers. So for uh, example A, notice the angle here is 44 degrees and over here it's 43 degrees. So this ray here in fact does not bisect the angle. So let's write that down. We've got ray GE, ray GE does not bisect angle H G F because it does not divide the angle into two congruent angles. All right, in order for it to be a bisector, it has to divide it into two congruent angles. So in comparison over here, I see a 52 degrees over there and a 52 degrees over there. So here we can say that ray RP bisects, remember bisects means divides it into two congruent parts. In this case, the two congruent parts are two congruent angles. RP bisects angle SRQ into angle SRP and angle QRP, right? And we could say that angle SRP is congruent to angle QRP. So a lot of notation here, a lot of vocabulary. All of this is extremely important. Uh, for you to know how to do so you can be successful in the class. All right, so why don't you pause the video, see what you can come up with for part C, um, see if you have an angle bisector, see if you have any congruent angles in the figure, and then when you restart, uh, there'll be a solution there so you can compare it. So pause now and see what you can do. Okay, so in this case, again, a little bit different, we have some congruent angles, but really there are no angle bisectors because we don't have a single ray that's dividing a big angle into two smaller angles like we did here in B. However, based on the tick marks, these two angles have similar tick marks, so we do know that angle YMN is congruent to angle EMO. Notice these angles have the vertex in the middle and it has a similar vertex. They have their vertex at point M. All right, so again, if you have any questions, um, write those down so you can ask them the next time you see me or your teacher. Uh, if you want to go ahead and try the challenge and uh, do the recap, recap it, go ahead and do that. And uh, you can ask me questions about those when you see me in class. And uh, we will see you in the next video.